So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple released iPadOS 15.2 beta 3 to all developers yesterday and I wanted to walk everybody through it. I'm gonna let you guys know if there's any new features that came out, any new changes, any bug performance improvements, basically everything that Apple has thrown at us. But again, this is a beta 3, so we're just kind of iterating on the beta 1 and beta 2, which means there probably aren't gonna be that many new features. But without further ado, let's figure out exactly what's going on and then finally find out if I recommend you guys put it on your main device. Let's get into it. Okay everyone, let's hop right into this video. And the first thing we'd like to do is see exactly how big this update was. So if we zoom in here, you can see that 15.2 beta 3 was 607 megabytes. So give yourselves anywhere from a gig to like 1.5 gigs of extra storage to make sure that you get installed correctly. Now again, just to reiterate, it doesn't mean that if you don't have the storage, it won't install. I just like to add that little extra bit just in case something does happen and there's like a corrupt file or midway through the update, it kind of crashes. But again, that is what we got going on in terms of the size of the update. So it is pretty sizable. And then what I like to do is actually go into settings. Let's go into general. Let's go into the about section and let's go into the naming, right? So with this version, this model number, we have 19C5044 lowercase b. So it seems like we're getting closer and closer to the RC edition. The next one we'll have probably next week is A, then we'll have the RC and then the final release. So give it about two to three weeks for the public release to come out for iPadOS 15.2 and bring all those features to everybody natively without needing to be on the beta program. And before we get into the new features that we found, because there weren't too, too many, I do want to go into the battery life. Let's see how we've been doing with battery life. You guys know how I like to always portray exactly what's going on from a battery perspective. But let's go over the last 10 days. We're doing about three hours and 21 minutes of screen on time, 21 minutes of screen off time. So we have LumaFusion in here, the home and lock screen, sidecar. So let's go on a day like Monday. So Monday, for instance, we got five and a half hours of screen on time and we used what looks to be a little less than 100% battery. So again, that's not bad. So some days are good, some days are bad, but LumaFusion took up 34%, which is basically one minute per percent, which is insane. Look at that, 33 minutes of usage, took up 34% of my battery. YouTube was about an hour 40, took up 27%. So you can see, like I was working with six or seven different files inside of LumaFusion. So the more you add into your editing software, the more battery is gonna be taken up on the iPad Pro which is just the reality of the situation. I know it stinks because we're only getting five and a half hours, but what can we do? Then we have photos, seven minutes. Uh, let's go into affinity photo, notes, something like Apple TV. So again, Apple TV, even though it was connected to charger, it only took up 4%. And the main reason is because probably Apple TV is super optimized for iOS and iPad OS. But that's what we had on this day. And now let's go into a day where we went over 100% charge. So this is probably sitting around 115% total charge. And we're looking at about six hours and 10 minutes of screen on time. LumaFusion, again, you can see how it differs a little bit here because the files that I was working with wasn't as intense inside of LumaFusion. So you can see hour and a half gave us 37%. That's almost three minutes per percent, which is something that I'll take, honestly. I'll take that from LumaFusion. But then we have something like Sidecar we use for about an hour and a half. Again, super optimized for iPad OS and Mac OS, giving us only 15% usage. So gotta love that efficiency. But overall, we're getting, look at that. So about six hours and 11 minutes take away about 15% of that. So again, we're probably doing five and a half to five hours and 45 minutes of screen on time, which again is not something that Apple portrayed. Apple told us eight to 10 hours. I know I'm on the beta program, but Apple should still be showing us what it would be like even as a developer with the battery being consumed with whatever I'm doing from a developer standpoint. So that's what we have from a battery life perspective. And again, I'm trying to use low power mode as much as possible. So I usually turn it on at around 50%. And let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see a shortcut that I created. Maybe I'll create a short where it shows how I turn on low power mode automatically at 50% as opposed to waiting for it to hit 10% for it to notify me or ask me to go into low power mode. So now let's talk about some of the changes slash new features. So if we go into the Find My app, I remember with beta 2, when we went into the item section, you were able to see two options, right? It was identify found item, but then also there was a second option that asked us, basically to track for unidentified items that are around us. So it was put there to kind of give us peace of mind to say like, hey, if somebody put an AirTag in your car that isn't yours or an AirTag underneath your bicycle seat or something like that, and they're trying to track you, then it'll notify you that there's somebody trying to track you and it'll ping that AirTag so you can like throw it out or get rid of it or whatever you need to do. But it looks like they removed it totally. Why? I don't really know, but you can see that we still have the identify found item. It brings up the searching item situation. If you let it do its thing, it'll start to look for lost items. I don't have anything lost right now. So again, 
that's still there with the Find My. They just removed that one security feature, which I thought was pretty nice, but maybe it's just not ready yet for Apple to really do something with it. But again, that is in the Find My app. That's one change that we noticed. The next one's actually inside of settings, and it's kind of the way they did their naming. So if we go into Wi-Fi, and this will actually work as well if you have a cellular iPad, in your cellular section, it will show up. But if you go into your actual Wi-Fi name, you can actually see that there's a new moniker called Limit IP Address Tracking. So Limit IP Address Tracking by hiding your IP address from known trackers in Mail and Safari. When this is turned off, iCloud Private Relay will also be turned off for this network. So I like to keep that on. I don't want people to know where I'm going. Not that I'm going anything anywhere weird, but I'd rather keep as much of my data as possible. So that is new right there. And then finally, in the Reminders app, so if you go into Reminders, this is an app that I really don't personally use too much, but now we have the ability to bulk edit based on tags, which again, is something that I personally haven't used. So I don't use tags inside of my Reminders, but if you do want to go into like one of your lists right here, make sure it's sorted by tags, you can go in here, and then you have the ability to bulk delete and then also create new lists based on your tags all through the little three dot like multi option section. And then the last thing that I did notice is that in the new notification center or your notification summary, which is what you get at the end of every day, there's actually a new little layout, which I don't really like. I don't really like this layout. It looks too cartoony. It doesn't look real. Like it looks like Apple, it almost looked like a glitch when I first saw it, but now then I found out that it was an actual feature. But again, this is how your new morning summary and evening summaries will show up kind of in this weird kind of collage format. But again, that's what we got with the new notification center and the summary. But that is pretty much all we got from anything new that I noticed. Leave some comments down below if you guys did notice anything new and also shoot me a DM on Twitter right here. I always love to see if you guys find any new features with these new beta updates. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal one. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't many changes. Apple kind of like reverted back to some of the beta one stuff, which I guess I don't really know why they did or why they added a feature and then remove it. I don't really know the mindset or the thinking of kind of, especially in the find my situation where they added a second option, which gives you a little bit more security, but then they removed it literally in the next beta update. So it's a little confusing, but I'm not gonna complain too, too much, but that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, hopefully you learned something new. It is very, very stable. So if you guys do wanna put it on a main device, I mean, go for it. Just know that there is some risk installing a beta software on your main device. Like you could technically lose your data and stuff like that, but that has never happened to me in the two and a half years that I've been part of the beta program. But again, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned because I got a really good one coming up on the MacBook Air or a really good video coming up real soon. So definitely stay subscribed, everybody. But until next time, peace. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe.